The sun won't be up for another two hours. But timing is critical, and the day's success depends on an early start. The goals of today's capture are to safely capture two wolves, uh, a male and a female. The female is pregnant. Now to explain what's at stake. The wolves we're talking about are extremely rare Mexican greys. The plan is to transfer them both from their current location at the Sevieta National Wildlife Refuge in New Mexico, then transport them more than 220 miles to their new home, Arizona's Apache National Forest. Mexican gray wolves are critically endangered, and so releases like this are vital to maintaining the health of the population in the wild. Not only getting the numbers up, but also keeping the genetics healthy by introducing new genetics back out. After entering the Sevieta Refuge, the team prepares for the task at hand. It's important that everyone knows their part, otherwise there's a very real risk of injury to wolf or human. This is not a zoo. These animals are not used to people coming and going. So the mere fact of a large group coming in is going to cause all the animals to start running and it's very stressful for them. The plan is to enter the wolf enclosure and form a human wall, guiding the female and male into separate den boxes. Yeah. Okay, the next time she turns around, we'll go ahead and take like 10 more steps forward. The process is never easy, but this time it all goes as planned. Okay, great. Now, with the female wolf safely captured, the team confirms the pregnancy seems to be on course. She has already um, probably plucked her own belly hair ahead of whelping, and that's to help the puppies find the nipples and be able to nurse. It's a sign that she will be whelping. <laughs> it's a good sign, it's biology and her biology telling her to get ready. The pregnancy is critical. The theory goes, once those new wolf pups arrive, they won't be as mobile as the adult wolves. The male and female will stay anchored to the territory, increasing the chances for a successful, permanent relocation. It is one of the harder things to do is to insert wolf in crate, without a doubt, one of the harder things. With both wolves loaded, it's now time for a five-hour drive through the open range of New Mexico and Arizona. And then finally, arrival at their new home, the Blue Range Wolf Recovery Area. It's a very happy day, and it's, you know, they're one step closer to being in the wild. It's cause for celebration, but the work is far from over. We put these wolves in here to replace wolves that unfortunately were, were illegally shot here in the area. So we want to make sure that we're keeping our wolf population healthy and making sure that we have opportunities for this population to grow and to be managed in a responsible way. To be sure, not everyone supports wolf reintroduction. Historically, wolves have been treated as a threat and dealt with in the harshest way possible. I think to me what's at stake is righting a wrong. Um, we, we, the federal government, other local state governments spent a lot of time trying to get rid of predators. There was a very successful anti-predator campaign in the late 1800s um, that caused you know, the, uh, the demise of the wolf. And even today, with only 75 known Mexican wolves living in the wild, some view them as nothing more than an unwelcome threat to livestock. Groups opposed to wolf reintroduction maintain it's not possible to have wolves around without resulting harm to livestock or to humans. We have to learn to coexist with them, to live in harmony with them. And there's quite a few things that can be done in terms of education and pro-wolf activities uh, that will help the rancher work and live in harmony with them. But it's really a cultural change. Scientists have been working for several years now on developing pro-wolf ranching methods to help work with ranchers on how to exist in harmony with uh, not only wolves but other predators. Wolves are a keystone species. They keep our ecosystem healthy. We learned that at Yellowstone. For over a hundred years they didn't exist there and we saw so much happening with overpopulation of elk and other species coming in and taking that particular niche. When they were reintroduced back into the wild the population started equalizing. We're seeing that here in New Mexico and Arizona. As for these recent transfers, things look good. Both wolves are calm and seem to be adjusting to their new location. Now uh, we give them some time. We let them get used to the area by being in the pen for several weeks. Um, she'll have pups, hopefully in the next seven to 10 days. The plan is to eventually open up the gates and let the wolves step out into the wild at their own pace. We'll continue feeding them until we document their uh, ability to kill elk and slowly reduce you know, their, 
their need for us and, their, and increase their survival on their own. Thank you.